So, ladies and gentlemen, before I will now introduce our keynote speaker, Marcus Grant, to you, um, I would like to take the opportunity to remind you, please, to keep your mobile phones switched on silent, <laughs> and also to take the opportunity of reminding you that we created the hashtag HealthyCities16 for everybody that would like to tweet about the conference. We are more than happy if you would like to do so. But now let's get back to the content side. We are very pleased that Marcus Grant from Bristol, an internationally renowned figure in urban health, accepted our invitation to speak at this conference. Marcus is a transdisciplinarian. He's an ecologist who works as an urban designer and landscape architect in urban public health. And in that sense, he's an ideal speaker for our conference, which is also about cross-cutting approaches to innovative local governance for creating healthier cities. Marcus is also a former associate professor and deputy director of the World Health Organization's Collaborating Center for Healthy Urban Environments of the University of the West of England. He was an expert advisor to the World Health Organization's European Healthy City Network for over 15 years. He's a fellow by distinction of the Faculty of Public Health in the UK. Through his consultancy, Environmental Stewardship for Health, Marcus focuses on the reconciliation of human health and biosphere health in the urban realm. He is author and co-author of various books in his field of expertise. So with this, ladies and gentlemen, let us welcome Marcus Grant. The floor is yours, Marcus. Thank you. <laughs> Thanks, that's very, very generous of you, Julia. Um, Um, I'm really sort of privileged and honoured to be in, invited here, um, and this is a, a wonderful occasion. Um, I'm not usually at events with so many people interested in public administration and the quality of public administration, and also healthy cities. It seem, seems sometimes the two are in different spheres, and the fact they're coming together is really important. Um, and what I'm wanting to do, it, it's you know, quite, quite a sort of um, challenge, isn't it, at the beginning of the conference. So I wanted to lay out some themes. Um, there's so much in this health and cities world, healthy cities world, I can't do it justice in, in the time. But what I can do is just sort of lay out some basic tenets and themes. And to um, organise those thoughts, I'm going to use Health 2020, which is a very important WHO document that all the ministers in the countries of Europe have, have signed up to. Um, so the tenets of Health 2020 have these four themes that I think really cut, cut across all the work we have to do. Innovative leadership, reducing inequalities, in particular health inequalities, active citizenship and life course approaches. And as I unpack these, you'll see a lot of it chimes with the work that's being done in the urban environment and health um, work in the region. So I've set out there that, that the um, framework for the urban environment and health, urban planning, green spaces, housing, and facilities against, if you like, the Health 2020. And we could go through in a very boring way and fill in each of those 16 boxes, you know, and then at the end we'll, we'll know what's in all the boxes. We don't need to do that, because what I want you to do is more sort of paint the picture and, and gradually, through the next few days, let's fill in those boxes, how we can actually progress and proceed. And I'm going to go through these just one at a time in a very simple way through each of these, but also there will be an element of audience participation, because I'm wanting to sort of also serve as a sort of warm up to what we're gonna hear and the interactions and conversations we want to have on the walking lunches and in the Q and A's, questions and answers for each of the speakers. And I'm as interested as, as anyone to see all the material over the next two days. Um, so innovative 
leadership. So I wanted to look back at the, a definition of leadership, a useful definition. And I, I think this one is really interesting. There's many definitions of leadership. A process of social influence in which one person can enlist the aid and support of others in the accomplishment of a common task. And that you can apply at all different levels. We're not talking about, I'm talking about leadership at the top political level. I'm talking about leadership that we can all show, professional leadership in all our work. Leadership that citizens can show, leadership from business towards the common task. But what's the common task? We need to paint a common task first. And there's no better place to start, I think, than having a common definition of health. What is health? Let's start with that as the common task. And I always go back to the definition in the World Health Organization's constitution. And here it is set out for us all. Health is a state of complete physical, mental, social well-being, and not merely the absence of disease. And with that sort of definition, at any conference, urban design conference, I can attract the interests of city designers, of urbanists, of transport planners, landscape architects, architects, because people can buy into this. It is very uh, visionary as well, but it places at the heart people and people's well-being and puts to one side, if you like, illness and illness services for a while. And that's really important if you're talking to um, designers, unless it's hospital architects. And, we, and I was with the mayor of Udine um, two weeks ago, and we were talking about hospital architecture and care settings. Of course, the design of care settings in hospitals is also important. But we're talking about the design of towns and cities where people are spending their time working, living, learning, playing, shopping, growing old. And this is from your own brochure of the project here urban environments and health. So you're also buying into this. The health of individuals, the health of towns, and the health of planet are all indis... That's a difficult word in English. <laughs> indis indissolubly linked. And... Brilliant. And indissolubly linked. It's about working with the system and co-creation and coming together and this multi-sectoral understanding towards a common goal. And the ultimate source of health, of human health, of course, here, and there is only one, and it's not too healthy. And what we've um, tried to do is create a tool, and I'll keep coming back to this tool, an image, a concept that maps health both at the smallest scale, the street, the neighborhood, the district, through to the city, the city region, the country, and the planet. And this is the tool that we use. And I will come back to this a number of times, so you need to sort of take it in all at one go. Um, and here we have, if you like, the, the, the health of the individual at the center. Let's say at the center, the, the goal is the health of the individual, the community. And of course, around the edge, we have the planet. That's what's supporting it. But we have all these other layers of human action human impact. In particular, the darker blue is where we see the operation of the built environment professionals on that darker blue. But of course, everything they do influences the other levels as well. I'll come back, back to the diagram. I don't have it in Catalan. I only have it in Castilian. Um, but someone could do a translation for me, maybe. Um, the European... Um, the Environment Agency picked it up and did a translation into 22 different languages, um, which is why uh, they've given me this one. Um, but you can't have well people on a sick planet. And this is uh, Thomas Berry, the US theologian. And then he went on to say, and that's what we're trying to do with all our technology. We're trying to keep people well on a sick planet. And every few years, these guys measure the um, living, the operating space that we have as humanity. And, and the, the latest one, 2015, that they published, I think the original one was in Nature. I can't remember if this was also in Nature. They're looking at about 11 basic categories of operating space we need as a species. And they're looking at the extent to which we're within our operating space or exceeding it. 
and it makes grim reading. It's only on freshwater use, stratospheric ozone depletion, and ocean acidification that we're below our safe boundary. The boundary is, um, the safe boundary is that inner one there. The boundary here is when you get into the zone of uncertainty, and beyond that one, you're in the risk zone. So we're not doing too well on looking after the planet, and we're actually now entering a period of fastest species extinction ever known. You've got species extinction in the fossil record here, recent past and future modeling, and this is a logarithmic scale. A logarithmic scale, you know, in any graph means, whoa, you know, what is going on? Um, and it's not as if as a species we're blossoming out of it. Because if we look at death in the 20th century, and this is all cause, all the different causes of mortality in the 20th century, and I'll just take, take you through it. So we've got from infectious disease here through to, we've got health complications at the top, cancers, of course, which are non-communicable diseases, Humanity, that's what we inflict on ourselves by wars, murder, accident. And then this huge um, weight of non-communicable diseases. And the cancers aren't included in, in that bubble there. They're over in a bubble over here. So actually, it's a bigger bubble. And that's what we're facing, really, in the sort of westernized, the, the high-middle-income countries, modern cities, is we've largely cured the communicable diseases, although there are outbreaks now and again. But we're looking at the non-communicable diseases, mental illness, um, respiratory disease, cardiovascular, heart disease, stroke. Um, and we're sort of building these diseases into the cities, in fact. Um, not on purpose. <laughs> um, so you can't actually have healthy people in a sick city either. And so just coming back to this, so the built environment, that's where we see the operation of the city investment often, city design, urban design. And of course, that impacts on people's health. And there's more and more evidence now in scientific papers on these different links. So let's say we put in a new bypass to a town. So that might influence the air or water dynamics in the catchment, might need some more flooding in the town. We don't know. It might be good for health as well, because there's less uh, air pollution in the town center. And then people can be more in the streets in the town center, leading to more social capital. So we use this to actually capture, like a health impact assessment, interventions that are physical. So you can have any physical intervention here and start to capture, well, what, what will this do? It's probably good for health and bad for health. And let's look at those impacts and let's try to reduce the impacts where it detracts from health and support where it's supporting health. It's a really interesting year because we've got the Habitat 3 at the national level, uh, international level, sorry, Habitat 3 process, and the World Health Organization are now combining with the UN to make sure that the Sustainable Development Goals, which have come out of the Millennium Development Goals, will also have health embedded. And this is a very important document that came out earlier this year, um, the Global Report on Urban Health, jointly um, authored here, and Alex Ross, who was uh, from the Kobe Center, the WHO Kobe Center, who was responsible for this report, he stated that in cities, progress in health depends not only on the strength of the health systems, but also on shaping urban neighborhoods. So we have it there at all levels now, really. This, the cities are coming to the fore. As we know, we passed in 2010 that pivotal point where 50% of humanity were now housed in cities, I just read a report saying that in 15 years' time, half of everyone in cities will be over 60. So there's huge demographic changes in cities. I think cities are the answer. Cities are the way forward. Cities leave their footprint all over the world, from the micro beads in the ocean, the dis disrupting fish patterns, fish lifestyles, to, to, you know, to chemicals in the Arctic. Cities are leaving their footprint and city lifestyles all over the world. So cities, sustainability, and health. Um, and this is the network, just to show you, that, that I've been working with. This is um, phase six, the current network of healthy cities run by WHO from Copenhagen. 
and you can see um, Spain is well represented there with three cities um, in the network and another two candidate cities here. I have the, I have the names here. I'll try and read them out. So it's, so it's San Andrew de la Barca, uh, Villeneuve de la Cañada, Vitoria Gastez, Barcelona, and the Hospitalet de Yeboragat. Is that any good? <laughs> They're all associated with, with the network. But also, there's a national network in Spain. So even cities that aren't associated with the WHO directly can be joining the national network. And there's peer-peer -peer support there. There's tools. Um, there's learning, et cetera, that can be derived from these, this network. And I'm sure several of you are connected with that. Um, and leadership isn't just about civic leadership or political leadership. We've got to think about citizen leadership, professional leadership, academic leadership, and also business leadership. And I've been to several conferences where businesses are starting to understand this agenda. Um, so this is a sort of interactive bit. If our question is, how can we support leadership for healthy urban planning? What I'm wanting you to do, because this is the end of the leadership bit, we're going to move on to the, to the next question. What I'm wanting you to do is um, turn and introduce yourself just to the neighbor, just in pairs. And how would you tackle that? How would you answer that? How can you personally support leadership for healthy urban planning I'll time it. We'll have one, two minutes. So just introduce yourself and, and tackle that question together. Over to you. <laughs> 